Hi everyone, this is Michelle Wee West and this is Driven, a series where I get to talk to some of my favorite athletes about their journeys as investors and what they think it takes to win. Joining me today is a woman who has truly done it all. She was the number one pick in the 2014 WNBA draft, won Rookie of the Year that same year and became a two-time WNBA All-Star. And now she's an ESPN NBA analyst and an angel investor in a couple of exciting companies. And let's welcome my fellow Cardinal, Shanae Ogun McKay. Yes. You're doing so many amazing things. I mean, WNBA player, you're on ESPN, you're just doing, you're investing. What has been your investment philosophy so far? I think it's, all been, it's been all about redefining what it means to win. And so I think when I think, I think about my investments and redefining what it means to win, it's like, okay, let's show that as a WNBA player, your girl's got money too. Yeah. As a broadcaster, I've got money. I can invest and the investments have to be intentional to make sure that we can create pathways for all of us to, to you know how we say in sports, everybody got it. Yeah. And so everything that I invest in or anything that I support has a personal touch that allows for the next generation to benefit from what we're doing. I think you've done that fantastically through the world of golf. Me, my sisters and the sisterhood of the WNBA, we do it through basketball. We were at Stanford at the same time. So many good memories. We will not get into that. But <laughs> I felt like it was like the turning point for Silicon Valley. Evan Spiegel was at school with us. Yep. And you know he went on to find Snapchat. We were just using Facebook. Instagram was just starting afterwards. Words. And I felt like it was this electric environment that we were in. Did that inspire you to become an entrepreneur? Were you thinking back then, I want to be an entrepreneur later on? Or did this start like just a couple years ago? I don't think it inspired me to be an entrepreneur in that moment because you know what we were in? Survival <laughs> mode as athletes, where now it's normal to say being athletes and you know also being students is a full-time job. I think it forced me to step my game up, mm. right? I'll, I always tell this story about uh, my freshman dorm uh, I had a room and then the guy next to me, he would wake up in the middle of the night and he would go to a conference room across campus and have meetings uh, with business partners and business leaders all across the world. And I'm like, dang, that's what my freshman like dorm mate is doing? Like, what am I doing with my life? Putting a ball in a basket? But I do think it reset the idea for me at Stanford that anything is possible. Yeah. Uh, my mentor at Stanford, my international relations major advisor, was former Secretary of State, but you know, Dr. Condoleezza Rice, as we all know. Huge Stanford supporter. Yeah. And I had a conversation with her, and um, she opened my eyes to say, like, Shanae, you give your all on the court, you can give your all in the classroom. And then I think, you know, moving forward, that mind mentality, I sort of extrapol extrapolated that to everything that I do. And so, no, at the moment, I was not like, I'm gonna be a businesswoman, I'm gonna be an investor, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. I think, I think we started seeing that at Stanford, that movement that we've come to know the last 10 years is more than an athlete. Like, that is the embodiment of our Stanford identity as students. So is there like a, a core element that you look for in your company that you invest in, or are you kind of just a mission-based? I think it's two things. One, I'm very pa passionate about giving people of our generation opportunity. And so I would just say first, creating an opportunity for young, talented people of our generation, the rising generation, to be involved. Are we speaking to that, that consumer? And then the second thing is, most importantly, diversity and inclusion, whether it is gender, whether it is you know being from a predominantly black league, making sure we have pathways for black women to be supported or people of any color to be supported or people that are on the margins of society. Like, I wanna make sure we intersect to our rising generation and also promote diversity and inclusion and that has to be, that has to be there on the deck. Yeah, what's the most important quality that you look for in a founder of a company that you're looking to invest in? I think it's, it's growth. Like, where are we going from here? Are we growing or are we complacent? If you're saying we need you to grow, that means you see value in my perspective. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that I engage with, whether it is like some of my sponsors, AT&T, DoorDash, Adidas, it's like, what is the strategic plan for us to continue to grow and make positive change? So I think that's it. I want to be around hustlers. Like, you know how it is? Yeah. When, you, when, you're a team, when you're playing sports, like you want to be able to know that your teammates to your left and your right has your back and is going to play as hard as you. And I think that athlete mindset has really helped me because now it's like, I am 30 years old. I am you know, very blessed with jobs that have allowed me to be comfortable and also a platform that allows me to create some meaningful change. How can we be on this journey together? And it's not like a quick fix. 
um, a quick deal. Uh, I think it's more about how can we grow in a way that's sustainable. Okay, so you you know, women historically have been underrepresented and underfunded in both sports and in VC. What's your advice for women entering any of these fields? I think it's, let's be covert and let's play the long game. Mm. Meaning oftentimes we want to have our own ownership but we do need to go and learn from the institutions, which might take sacrifice because we understand that we may not always be represented in every place that we step into, whether you're a woman, a woman of color, like we know what that's like. Yeah. And so just be being comfortable, understanding that your existence there is valued, mm -hmm. learning the institutional knowledge when necessary, and when we have the resources, we can do it on our own. I think that to me is like, letting women know that like there oftentimes when we're trying to build businesses or invest we feel like it's so much more of an uphill battle yeah. because of what we have to deal with in society so to be able to know that you're not alone and that your dreams are valid and that collectively we can do some really dope stuff i learned from the WNBA when we stand together as 144 players we can make some real change when we stand together as collectives of business women, I bet you we can get exactly what we need done and then some. Okay, so let's talk about your first investment in Athletic Greens. Can you explain briefly what it is and um, tell us the journey? Yeah, so uh, what had happened was I actually saw, it's funny, when I was presented with the opportunity because they were looking for strate strategic investors, I didn't realize I had started seeing the signage for Athletic Greens around Los Angeles where I'm based. There were billboards around. I was like, hold up, I know that. And it was cool because it's talking about a healthy supplement for you to get going, you know, a drink that you can drink that provides your vitamins and nutrients that you need to power your day. And I just knew it spoke to me, one, because finding healthy things that are, you know, certified amongst the athletic world is very important. But I also am like a hot take, girl, don't cancel me because I've never really liked breakfast. So I'm like, I'm not a big breakfast person. I'm heavy into lunch and dinner, like real meals. You heard me, real meals. Wow, I'm just kidding. Okay. Even in my family, we'll like, discuss this off. Camera. I know, right? My family loves breakfast, and like, Shanae just doesn't really eat breakfast. But I'm also a competitor that like, I don't like having food in my system. And so, Athletic Greens was the supplement that allowed me to have more sustenance before competition. Now, mind you, my sister is like a big breakfast person. She has to eat before every workout. But we all know we are all different. Mm -hmm. And so, to just to see a brand that was pre providing a solution for my life that I had already started seeing authentically, I was like, oh, this is a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. and they always say, invest in what you know. Mm. And I know you made an investment in overtime and it's really heavy in basketball. Was that the sector that you were really comfortable in investing? Oh yeah, and I love it because I think overtime represents how you can start with one thing and your end goal is so much bigger than you even imagined. This is an account that we all saw on social media. It's like, oh, they post all the cool clips, especially from grassroots hoops or grassroots sports. And then to see what their aspirations were, this is what you love as an investor. It's like, Shanae, we, I know a lot of times we, we post about you know boys basketball, men's basketball, but we wanna really build out this women's basketball and just women's sports vertical. We see you as someone that's uniquely positioned to help amplify this and give us advice in this area. We appreciate your perspective. Come build with us. And I was like, hell yeah, let's get it. Let's disrupt. Which by the way, my agent, her name is Allison Gaylor. Her agency is called Disrupt the Game. And so like our mindset, especially if you like look at my career, has been to step into every space professionally and be disruptive. Like they got ahead of the trend of what is now what, NIL or the G League and that type of stuff. And so to build on the ground floor with people that just said, hey, we, we're great at posting clips, but we have these dreams and aspirations and I can help be a part of that. And also they gave me like a really cool like framed jersey with like my like overtime super pretty. Um, so like they just, they get it. Nice, and let's talk about another grassroots organization that you're not only investing, but you're co-founding, Pickleball. <laughs> I am so stoked about this. I'm obsessed. <laughs> we need to have a showdown soon. But first, let's talk about your investment in Pickleball. Yeah, so I'm a co-founder in the Women's International Pickleball Association. And this association is to really help support the women in pickleball. And pickleball is the fastest growing sport right now in America. A lot of the key people that drive the sport are women, with female players, female pros, and even amateurs. And so to be able to use my expertise as a WNBA player and also vice president of the WNBA Players Association, where we've drawn up CBAs, we've managed players, and we try to advocate for diversity and inclusion in the sport. 
to take that lens and apply it to something that is in its germination with uh, players that are looking to find set a good foundation of like, this is what we hope to have, you know, insurance for our players, salary for our players that is guaranteed, equitable, you know, um, prize money. It's been yeah. cool to see so many players that have stopped officially playing mm -hmm. their respective sports. I mean, you like Dirk Nowitzki, you see Drew Brees. I saw you on IG on your stories with your whole family and the cutest little pickleball pick um, with your uh, paddles. It's just cool to see that this is like the new frontier of relatable sport and being able to protect women through WIPA, Women's International Pickleball Association. I think that's I'm cool. To, I'm happy to be a part of that. Yeah, I mean that's so cool. I mean, already talking about what you do for the player association, like drawing up all these, you know, agreements and using that. I mean, it, it, they could be benefit so much from that. So we don't play. Yeah. You're gonna be my like. We're not gonna play against each other. We're gonna play together, yeah, but, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who are we taking down? Uh, maybe like whoever we normally play with, we'll play against. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Johnny <laughs> Necca. Here Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So last fast question. Okay. If there's a company or opportunity you wish you could have invested Ooh, in. Oh, girl, Beats. Probably well, Beats. I think Beats just because it was one of those things where like if you got in early and you didn't realize the return and yeah. like this was like LeBron and Dr. Dre, right? like it, that was one of those things that in my head I was like, dang, that was like so smart and how the business yeah. built. You know, all those, um, those blue chip ones. But honestly, I would take Eddie one. Yeah, I would right. take any, each and every. Yeah. It's like hot to time machine. Let's go back. Yes, please. Let's go back to Stanford yeah. freshman year. Hey, Ev. Ev, yeah. Ev Hire Hey, us. we'll give you Hire our per us. diem. Yeah. Forget our pro careers. Exactly. Like, let's just Forget go. It. <laughs> Thank you so much, Renee, for coming on our show. I had so much fun chatting with you, and I'm just like hyped. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, anything for the goat, okay? No, I, the I goat. do need help. I do need help. My swing is is trash. We'll work on so it. we'll play pickleball, yeah. and I need you to help because apparently real dollars are made out there, and so I need you as like, oh, like yeah, yeah. You got it. Okay, I got please. you. Thank you. <laughs>